the rest of the story. Today's computers are ensnared for the good, we are told, in what has become the World Wide Web. How recently that communication marvel took root and flourished. Before you and I could fully comprehend the Internet's potential, however, Fred Gower was a fervent believer in our exciting future. He was among the first to envision a worldwide web of information and communication. He was also among those not hampered by genius-level computer savvy, so his imagination was free to explore the people possibilities of the emergent communications revolution. His practical perspective led him to one conclusion, that the possibilities needed promoting. So, Fred Gower took it upon himself to spread this new gospel far and wide, to share his vision of a world electronically united. But in order to bring the general public on board, there was somebody else he had to sell first. And for that someone's benefit, he arranged a private demonstration in Providence, Rhode Island. With the aid of a technically adroit associate, Gower explained to him the requisite devices and procedures in shirt sleeve English. The gentleman appeared impressed, but a little bewildered. And then... Fred put him hands-on in charge of the system, and as the fellow unassisted conversed online with surprising ease, a smile of discovery, of wonder, of accomplishment grew and grew and grew on his face, the face of the President of the United States. Well, rather soon following the success of that demo to end all demos, Fred Gower's dream of wreathing the globe in electronic camaraderie and conversation and information did come true, and that more than a hundred years ago. For the World Wide Web of Wire Fred had hoped would bind us all as brothers was to bear our salutations and our solicitations and our schemes by means of an astonishing invention then and now known as the telephone. Visionary Fred Gower, he was also managing agent of an audiologist and an inventor named Alexander Graham Bell who June 29 of 1877 from a parlor in Providence, Rhode Island, City Hotel, spoke through Western Union telegraph lines to associate Gower and President Rutherford B. Hayes, who was poised breathless at a site 13 miles away. Regarding the modern computer's right now integration with today's telephone lines, regarding the wonders and complexities and frustrations of the capital I Internet, there are multitudes skeptical still. But skepticism was ever thus. For two years, subsequent to that compelling demonstration in Providence in May of 1879, at the urging of the National Telephone Company, a telephone was installed on a trial basis on a wall in the telegraph room of the White House. And yet, you know what? So few telephones were there in all of the nation's capital at that time that President Hayes, just for fun, just to make one call, telephoned his Treasury Secretary across the street. And then he put the receiver back on the hook, where it remained, gathering dust. An amazing invention, the President declared. An amazing invention. But, he said, who would ever want to use one? Well, you know... Indeed, you know the rest of the story.